Okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yeah, that was pretty funny, right? Did you put that clip in there? <laughs> yeah, I had it on there. This is a pretty cool uh, streaming platform. I think yeah, it's called I like uh, it. Restream. So anyway, so uh, thanks for coming in live. Yeah. Um, I think I made a Facebook uh, event and I'm having a hard time linking this to that event because I had a lot of people that are interested. So I don't know, if, mm. you know, Did but you anyway, uh, yeah, yeah, I posted it, um, but this is supposed to link to it. So it's telling me on my app like to go live, but I'm sure people oh. will come in here. But uh, yeah, thanks for coming. For those who are listening, Adriana is a... Uh, She's a sub two student, Gator Lender. She's also an agent um, in SoCal. Mm -hmm. So, um, yep. yeah, I just the reason why I wanted to bring, yeah, a little bit of everything. She wears many hats. Uh, the reason why I wanted to bring you in is that I know there's a lot of people that are trying to get into the midterm space as well mm -hmm. as the short term space. So, uh, yeah. I wanted to see what are you doing in terms of the midterm space and maybe share briefly like, what made you get into the midterm space? Yeah, so um, really kind of in property management, I've been in it since 2014. My partner's been in it since 2005 or six. So we've been uh, in property management since the beginning, kind of when VRBO first started and then Airbnb came on. Um, we definitely fell into it uh, in short term management wise. Um, and then as far as midterm, you know, anything over 30 days between, you know, 30 and 30 days and three months um, is definitely popular in our market. So we're in Oceanside, Southern California. So we get a lot of snowbirds that come out uh, from like November through February or so. Um, so if we do offer monthly rentals, it would be during that time. Um, but even just being in our market um, in Oceanside, we're also a military location. So we have uh, Camp Pendleton here, the Marine base, um, obviously a lot of infrastructure and hospitals and all that stuff. But um, a property does really well here for short, mid and long term. So by doing midterm, it just kind of came naturally because there's a need for it, right? And so if we have properties, mm -hmm. we can fill that need for our clients, um, it's all good. So in our particular market, it's just kind of a natural progression, I'd say. Oh, gotcha. So I never understood what's the difference between a midterm and short term for those who are wondering as well. Yeah, so short term rental is anything, a stay less than 30 days. And then a midterm would be uh, 30 days to maybe three months, so like a 90-day stay. And then a long-term in the rental space would be like a three-month to six-month. Um, it's a little bit different than a long-term rental. A long-term rental is more of like a 12-month uh, lease with like one tenant. So in the rental space, a long-term is like three to six months. Oh, okay. Does that vary like per like region or is that kind of like standardized across, I guess, in the U.S.? Like because I hear everyone throwing like the word short term and then midterm, and then yeah. you have uh, HOAs that consider X amount mm -hmm. of days, you know, short term or vice versa. Yeah, I'd say it's like standard. I mean, it's kind of um, just a, a rule of thumb, just to kind of a, to go by it. I would say a long term or midterm rental, one month to three month stays. If you have traveling nurses, which you're familiar with, I mean, their contracts are three months, six months or so. Um, but yeah, I would say it's pretty standard. Um, and short term is short term stays. So um, no one is staying there longer than 30 days typically. So, oh, okay. So then you mentioned you do like property management as well. Does that cover also like short terms or mainly just midterms or how does that even work? Uh, all of it. So we have a short term rental management company here in Oceanside. We're full service. So we do everything for our clients, a very traditional model. So um, clients hire us to manage their property. So we do everything from guest management, marketing. Uh, we set up the properties for our clients if they need it, if they need help with it. Um, we manage uh, guest services, pre-stay, current stay, and post-booking. Uh, we do maintenance in-house uh, for our clients. We don't really um, send that out to vendors. So it tends to save our clients money. Uh, we manage the housekeeping, the turns, as we call them, the turnovers, so the cleaning aspect. Um, and then on the midterm space, it's very similar, very similar setup. Um, but on the midterm, since in California, at least you have to have a broker's license to do anything over than 30, over 30 days for someone else. So um, that's where I bring in the brokerage that I'm assigned to as a realtor. So then 
it's very similar. I mean, because I'm managing it all, but um, it's a different type of marketing. Um, and then the 30 days to six months, whatever it is. And then also for them, I run their long-term management program uh, or I help with it. So that's also doing traditional tenant placement. So we do marketing screening uh, for long-term tenants. So like, you know, 12 months to two years, whatever it is. So again, it's a little bit of, of everything just depending on what's needed. So. That's basically everything. So yeah. are you, is that service just local to California? or are you guys yeah, nationwide or at the moment it is um we have definitely been asked to go across country um in the west coast we've definitely been asked to do management in other states i mean as we personally grow our portfolio we'll definitely be building that out wherever we land um but at the moment we're in uh, california but i definitely foresee a future of us going elsewhere so yeah, yeah, I think that'll be really good to to uh, offer that service. Uh, obviously, whenever you guys uh, feel you're ready uh, yeah. for management, I have a lot of people reaching out within sub two and outside of sub two, and I see many posts. I like I see like one every other day where someone needs like a property uh, management service, and if they already have you that does it all, I think that'd be great. Yeah, for sure. So, or to answer questions, you know, people have you know, questions on, I don't know, how to set up a property or what should I do with a tenant or whatever it is. Like I'm always here to bounce ideas off of, you know, I can lend my knowledge. I mean, I don't know everything, but if I have, if there's something I don't know, I can find someone that knows it. So yeah, be a resource. Just use me as a resource. <laughs> okay. And then do you do anything uh, with like insurances and stuff like that? Um, yeah, so we have um, a local tenant placement company. I think they have other offices across the country, but they reached out to us based on our local reputation, what we do in the short term space and just referrals and communication and uh, connections that we have here. So they work for insurance companies. Um, and then through my brokerage, I was actually just talking to my broker this morning um, that we're being contacted by other insurance companies directly, which is great. So I think that will be built out probably pretty soon because we have other properties on the market for rent right now, um, that they could come in and furnish and, you know, do it, whatever they need to do. So I guess the answer is yes and no. So, yeah. Oh, I see. So, so just curious with, the uh, like the insurance, would you happen to know, like, um, like how much they offer just in general, like, you know, cause typically mm -hmm. short terms, they offer more like a higher return than midterm, but it comes at a cost like management. You can right. deal with like bad tenants and trash your place or whatever, opposed to a long term, it's more, you know, stable, uh, mm -hmm. but the returns are maybe not as great. So right. with the insurance, do you know, like kind of where in that spectrum, like does it fall like on the lower end, maybe like a higher return? Yeah, I would say it's on the higher return. Um, it's, it, there's no like specific metric for it, like how much more in dollars or percentage. I mean, just in our experience. And again, I think I com commented on someone's post that you tagged me in, but it's, it's also very much location based. But what we've seen is 15 to 20%, sometimes more than what our average like monthly posted rate would be. Um, mm -hmm. so we love insurance companies. We love the tenant placement because they're, uh, we've never had an issue with them. They, they do the vetting it's guaranteed income. So. I would say definitely if you're thinking about a midterm strategy, like create those relationships with the tenant placement companies and insurance. And then of course there's the whole model for um, uh, like traveling nurses and hospitals and all that. So I would say yes, like if you're gonna do midterm, really create those connections to increase uh, your revenue more than just standard. Awesome. And by chance, do you know like just any companies off the top of your head that partner up with like investors? for like, you know, uh, like insurance companies and stuff like that, or any you've heard in within the sub two group? You know, I haven't found any in the sub two group. I haven't been looking for it. So I don't really know off the top of my head. I just know kind of our local ones, um, but that is a good question. And I think um, we probably should create some sort of like database or list on that so we can share it, right? Amongst the, I should the probably group. do that, right? You'd be the good one to do that. <laughs> Yeah, actually, um, since I have a couple of people here, uh, I wanted to talk about briefly because um, uh, I know there's a lot of uh, people trying to get into the sub two midterm space and they have the real estate. They have the strategy to acquire the, the properties, but mm -hmm. they don't really know how to staff or anything, you know, of, of that end. And so a lot of people are, are going to the midterm and the short terms because they're offering great returns. 
And, you know, it's always in business because there's just so many like travel contracts. There's a bunch of uh, like you have the border patrol contracts people don't really know about. Like they have a lot of these nurses, uh, medics, mm -hmm. EMT staffed along the border where they're making like five, six thousand a month just just in per diem alone. Uh, and also like the travel travel nurses in level one trauma hospitals, they have yeah. a lot of uh, they have a lot of uh, like nurses there and they, they depending on the area, they give a, a stipend, which is tax free. As yeah. a matter of fact, you actually have a really big strike happening in California, Oregon, oh, no. uh, Colorado. We have the next couple of weeks, uh, Kaiser Permanente, a lot of the nurses are going on a strike. So it's going to be a huge like oh, need of nurses who need a place to stay. Yeah. Um, cause you, usually the companies, they'll just give you the money and mm -hmm. most people they will get a hotel and the mm -hmm. smarter ones, they'll go and split like an Airbnb or whatever. And so yeah. I came up with ideas I was like, Hey, why don't I just create some kind of platform or database where, yeah. cause I already have, you know, my foot in the bucket on the medical side. I've been there for 10 mm -hmm. years. I, I know everything there is about traveling. I've, I've done it all. And, um, yeah. I'm also, I'm, I'm also an admin on a couple of, uh, allied health and nursing uh travel group pages mm -hmm. um and i'm like the i'm like the go-to spot whenever my friends are looking for a contract in a certain area and recruiters too i do yeah. a lot of uh i give them a lot of referrals so i thought about creating some kind of document where those mm -hmm. who have a, a property that they want to get staff they just fill out that form and then i can get that form it'll be like some kind of live google sheets form and i can just pin it on all these group pages right and then mm -hmm. i can uh make a post public post so anytime there's a contract you know say in somewhere in colorado they can just go to the top of the group and then they can see you know in the, in the area uh they'll be able to see the uh, filter you know the, the amount of properties there is maybe there's like seven yeah. properties in san antonio or like whatever the case so i'm actually That's working cool. on that it'll be ready That's in a couple good. weeks yeah 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 and, yeah, so that's what I was uh, working on. But anyway, moving forward, um, so you're also a, a Gator lender. How does that mm -hmm. work and, and what does Gator mean? Yeah, so really it's the nuts and bolts of it is EMD funding, EMD lending. Um, now there's transactional funding as well. But so if there's a wholesaler and investor that needs uh, earnest money deposit to get the contract into escrow and start the process so they can start finding it and assign the deal, um, we can come in and lend it, obviously it varies by market, but it's like a short term lend with a, a return. So the lender, which would be whoever it is, is paid back through escrow uh, once the deal closes. So oh. for, for those who, who maybe don't know, um, what what is like, I guess, in simple terms, like what is escrow and like, e like, why does someone need EMD? Yeah. So EMD, earnest money deposit in the real estate world is really just showing that you have skin in the game, that you're serious about the transaction. Um, it varies percentage wise based by market. Like in here in California, we're at like two, three percent. Other places like in Texas in certain areas, it could be like one percent, whatever the standard is. But you're basically putting a deposit in as a good faith and saying, hey, like I want to finish this transaction. I want to buy the property. And then you have a period of inspection time frames uh, for the property due diligence. Um, and if for some reason you don't perform, then typically the seller can keep those funds. Um, obviously, it's market by market. It's different everywhere, but that's generally what it is. So just a good faith deposit that you're going to move forward and close. Mm, okay. And how do you decide which which like properties you want to fund? Like, can I just, you know, get or anyone just get a property under contract and just come to you and be like, hey, I need ten thousand dollars. Um, so really we're looking for wholesale transactions. Um, I did one recently with, uh, not so much a wholesale buy and hold. Um, but ideally the wholesales are a little bit more, um, easy to find, especially with the creative group with pace and then sub two, there's a lot of wholesale transactions happening across the country. So if you did have a deal, you'd come to us or come to me and say, Hey, I need 2000, 5,000, like what's your uh, return, that kind of thing. Um, we, we re review the de the deal and make sure that it's a the contracts written. So you need to provide the full contract. What's the inspection time period? That kind of thing. Um, and really, what's it worth to the, the the borrower as far as the return goes? So, because we these are funds that we're lending out, not so much personal funds because we're not you don't do that. It's really like credit or lines of credit, those kind of things. So, if I lend to someone five thousand. That I need to make sure that return makes sense in the time period that makes sense, which is usually like 30 days or so, 45 day lens. 
Um, that's what Gator is. Anything longer than that, you're looking at private money, structuring, and those kind of things. So Gator is just really for short term uh, type of needs. Oh, okay. And if like someone needs DMD, how do they get the money? They just like, do you send them a cash app or something? Or how does that work? We send them Venmo. I'm just kidding. Um, no, we send, no, it always goes to title. So um, we have a transaction coordinator that will handle all the communications. So between myself and the borrower and escrow and title and et cetera. So um, it all goes through title. So you, we never send the money directly to the person, the borrower. Um, just for protection and then we under we need to make sure that title and escrow understand our instructions because it's structured as a um, jv agreement like a joint venture it's not so much a lender borrower type of relationship it's just a joint venture so um yeah it always goes to title that way we can ensure that proper documentation is in place to get our money back if the deal doesn't go through um, so we always have a tc uh, especially for us uh, the borrower will always pay for that TC. So if you're thinking about like a fee, cause there's a lot of moving parts. So for our particular purposes, the borrower would pay for the TC and then the return. So. Oh, okay. And for those who are listening and you don't know what a TC is, it's just basically someone you hire that, um, makes sure all the paperwork is in order and, um, coordinates with all entities, all parties involved to make sure, you know, everything's good to go to say yeah. the least. Yep. So and answer questions. I mean, they're a really good resource. So um, they're kind of additional eyes and ears, right? So if the borrower or the seller has questions, it's a great in between to allow us to kind of do other things. So, yeah. Okay. And then I guess more of like a, a personal question with like EMD, like what would you say would be worth like a return? You know, like let's say someone needs funding for 3K, but they're only making say like a $2,000 assignment fee. Do you, you have like a limit? Cause I know most skaters, they want, you know, like 60, 70%. And that's yeah. not always the case, especially if you're going after, you know, those who are going after low equity deals with like 10% entry or less, mm -hmm. they have to factor in that, you know, that money they're going to borrow and there might not be any meat on the bone. So yeah, like, do you kind of take that into consideration or you just yeah. have like a flat rate fee? No, we do take into consideration. So everything you said makes 100%. It makes sense. So it really is deal by deal. Um, we like the 60 to 70% 70, 70 return uh, plus the transaction mm -hmm. fee. But, you know, it's one of those things, if it's a repeat borrower, maybe there's like a discount. Um, we definitely do charge a non-refundable percentage up front. Um, tends to be 2 to 3%. Uh, minimum like $200 or so and that basically covers the lender so for example if I have to come in with another lender let's just say I have 2,000 and they have 3,000 or whatever it is we can wrestle so if someone needs more and I don't have the funds for it then I can bring in my other networks of, of gators and make the deal happen but everyone definitely is probably looking at 60 to 70 percent there really is no like minimum like or I shouldn't say minimum no standard percentage of like return but um it just has to make sense so i just case by case deal by deal you know uh, okay you know off topic i i found out what happened um for some reason the live is it, it got the live because i have a live va training and role play coming soon and when i went live it, it took that caption so instead oh. of saying gator lending yeah so i think people are confused that's a couple people messaging me but anyway for those who are here i actually went ahead and paid for ten thousand skip trace leads uh in bexer county i'm going to post a qr code on the screen if you guys want to pull your phone out scan the qr code these are uh brand new freshly leads i spent about 600 bucks on these uh so feel free to you know um use them i'm going to go ahead and add the qr code uh on the screen here what Hold county we're at uh san antonio oh sweet cool yeah so i recommend uh you guys pull it up on the computer because it, it is uh i basically embedded a google sheets uh, on the web on my website so there's ten thousand leads on there so it might load a little slow on the phone so you can load it up on the computer uh the link is um thecreative1.io forward slash leads nice and is uh are these low equity or what kind of leads uh, so the uh, that's a good question this is actually um it's like a financial distress so they have they have a lien uh they're going through a pre-foreclosure and or they're behind on payments they're like they have some kind of arrears mm. um cool. and i got these from i got these from prop stream actually so 
Nice. That's a good deal. Sweet. Yeah, 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 of course. So my last question is how can others, um, you know, get in contact with you and, um, you know, what are you focusing on the most right now since you wear, you wear many hats? Yeah, yeah, I do. <laughs> um, I'd say the best way to find me would be on Facebook um, or Instagram, Adriana Meza Invests. Um, I can even put my phone number too. If you guys want that, you can text me. That's fine. Um, I don't know how to put it on the screen, but I'll just tell you. Um, so it's 442-999-0259. You guys can text me. Text me first before calling because I get a lot of calls and info, but that's probably just the best way. So text and then social. Um, and then right now we are looking at a couple of different deals um, all over kind of California. So that will have an exit strategy of short term and midterm uh, in that space. So that's what I'm focusing on pretty much right now is raising capital for those and finding the right partners, private money partners. Um, and then also focusing on, um, which we can get into a little different time, but my podcast for um, Plans for Pause, which is my like dog rescue kind of mission that I'm moving forward with in the real estate space. So um, a lot of different moving parts with that one, but those two are kind of like my main focus right now. So. Wow, that's that's amazing. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. I can't wait to hear more about about that. Um, yeah. Oh, actually, since I want to mention this, since I'm already on the video, is uh, I developed a platform um, for others to disposition their seller finance and and wraps. Oh, uh, yeah, the, awesome. Yeah, it's it's still in the development phase. I got a couple more weeks, but think of it like a Zillow, but at a much 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 smaller scale. Because I mean, cool. you have yeah, you have Deal Central. And you have investor lit, but these are tailored more towards investors, not so much just like regular buyers. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people are having a hard time like dispoing wraps. Mm -hmm. um, and I know exactly how to find the wrap buyers. I'm gonna be making videos and stuff like that. But basically, I I uh, developed a platform around it. And uh, once it's live, you'll be able to list your property upfront for free. Uh, we'll even offer like you know, someone to come and take uh, pictures of the house, even with a drone, if you want like professional footage. Because I just think you lose so much credibility when you know you close on a on a low equity deal like a sub two, and then you try to sell it on a wrap, and then yeah. you know you most people put it on like the Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist, and then you put the Zillow link, and then it shows like that you recently bought it for like yeah. you know that it was sold for like two thirty, and you're trying to sell it for three twenty. <laughs> so it, it, the credibility goes out the window. Yeah. So that's why I came with the platform. It's going to look really nice, very simple to use. I already have a big list of wrap buyers. I have maybe like a little over 200. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them I get them from credit repair companies. Uh, and cool. I actually, I'm going to have VAs in place. I, I posted some scripts in the sub two group of how to find wrap buyers, like what organizations, uh, entities to talk to, like the attorneys, the credit repair companies. So anyway, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be going live as well as some of my colleagues with credit repair companies talking about like credit repair, and, and then bridging the gap with, you know, those that are trying to dispel wraps and, and how it's a symbiotic. It's like a win-win uh, right. for all parties. I, I got a, a, a content creator too. I think I'm spending like $5,000 a month. I'm just on marketing alone. So you'll mm -hmm. be able to list the property for free. And then my goal is to help uh, lower that holding cost. So if we do are able to dispel your property in, you know, say in a reasonable time, then we can worry about some kind of referral fee. Uh, yeah. on the back end so that'll be up and running probably i would say like two three months definitely before the end of the year and Very i'll have cool. a really big announcement yeah yeah and then also I so i i partnered up with uh with prop stream so uh i i built mm -hmm. this really cool um just document generator i see a lot of great value versions of the loa generator out there uh i'm not really trying to compete with anyone i just i'm lazy I've always been lazy. I always found things to do easy, uh, you know, easier, and I don't mm -hmm. like doing tedious stuff. So, you know, I built like an all-in-one thing that writes up your contracts, PSAs, promissory notes. Like, just takes the data from whatever you're, mm -hmm. you already have, uh, automated email templates, and all that. So, I'm going to be sharing um, a certain feature of that for free. Like, I I don't have anything to sell to anyone. I'm just putting that up front. I don't mm -hmm. sell whatever I, I do. I do custom builds on certain stuff and those are all just, you know, word of mouth, but I'm, I, I will be sharing that LOI generator. I'm in the process of turning it into an app and basically you'll be able to go in there and you just type the seller's name 
you know, mm-hmm. address X, Y, Z, and then the click of a button, it just, it sends a, the PDF, you know, straight to you. And on a bigger scale, it will be a website where you'll have like a user login and then you mm-hmm. can see your, you know, the LOIs you generated, the contracts and you can, you know, edit or whatever, but that's where it's going to. Um, cool. yeah. If you guys want to sign up for the, I, I have a webinar coming up with the PropStream representative. It's called, uh, you go to the creative one.io slash webinar, you can sign up and I'm going to be giving away a, uh, a free one year PropStream, like a full year paid uh, on the house, as well as my custom build out. I'll do it for mm. completely for free. Honestly, if I were to charge, I'd probably charge like 10,000. Like it's, it's, it's pretty high end stuff, but yeah. I have nothing to sell. So if you guys want to join, I'll also be giving away. I got a bunch of shirts and like, you know, uh, caps and stuff from uh, prop stream from Burton. Uh, uh, so he's going to be sending me a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to be just giving those out at random. And then also as promised on my next live, when I do that webinar, I'm going to uh, type all the names that like the post and I'm going to throw it on a live on some kind of generator. And then just three random names, I'm going to do the LOI generator. Uh, build that completely for free so very cool. it'll be interesting but that's pretty much that's all i got to say thank you for everyone who uh joined again if you guys want to get my free leads uh ten thousand uh ten thousand skip trace leads in san antonio texas um it's the creative one.io slash leads i'm putting the qr code uh on the screen I'm going to leave it on for another maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then we'll end this live. Uh, Other than that, do you have any questions or anything you want to throw out there, Adrian? Um, Let me think. Like blink twice if you're in trouble. What's that? (laughs) Blink twice if you're in trouble. You keep looking at (laughs) me. No, I'm like trying to think of like what. I mean, so I'm here as a resource, you know? So like if there is anyone that has maybe a listing, like a... Airbnb listing or VRBO and they want some feedback on it, like I'd be happy to take a look and give my two cents. Like if they want, um, cause we do this, you know, every day. So with our properties, so um, they can always send me a link on my you know, message or on social and we can schedule a time uh, to go through that. So I think I can add value there. I can help uh, talk through midterm stuff. So just, I'd say just reach out if you have questions on any of it, definitely reach out. Awesome. And then uh, can you share your number one uh, again or email so others can contact you who are just chiming in? Yeah. So 442-999-0259. I'll put it on the chat. Yeah. And then you can just text me, you know, where we we saw me and we'll go from there. (laughs) Awesome. Hey, well, I really appreciate your time and for sharing a lot of uh, the stuff you know about midterms, and I, I learned a couple things. And looking forward to your other future uh, ventures. And yeah, we'll connect for sure. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you. thanks everyone for joining. We'll see you on the next one. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye-bye.